Okay, so what I'm going to do over here is um, is create a little function here. Okay, and we'll put uh, L there, or minus L there. Maybe I'll make this a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm going to put a function in here. What does piecewise smooth mean? Well, what it means is that the function has infinitely many continuous derivatives, except at a finite number of points. open dot here and okay so that's my function okay now we can talk about um, uh, the convergence theorem it essentially says that anywhere here where the function is continuous the Fourier series converges to the function at that point however in a place like this I'm going to label this the point x naught where the function is discontinuous, then the Fourier series converges to the mean. So it converges to that little plus right there, which is supposed to be halfway between those two points. And it converges here. Now this is crazy, right? So what it's saying is that Fourier series is going to converge. It's a, so that Fourier series is the sum of continuous functions and it's going to converge to the green line everywhere where it's continuous but at these jump points it converges to the midpoint so essentially at the jump points this infinite series will converge to something that is not continuous the other thing to talk now I, that, that's a confusing idea it is a little bit confusing so we're making a discontinuous thing out of continuous stuff the other point I'd like to make with you is we should think about what is the continuous extension. Okay, so so you have to extend this function so um, so that here we are from minus L to L, that's where F is defined. The continuous extension repeats the function with a period of 2L. So at this point here, now I extend it. So I look over at the other side and I say, okay, well I do this. Right, and then this piece is somewhere up here. I'm doing my best, so don't be too critical. And then the function goes down and up and off and does its other thing. And over on this side, of course, it's repeating in the other direction. So if I were to try to do that, I guess I'd go up like this and down and over and... Okay. So anyway, you get the idea. So you keep repeating this thing. Okay. The important point is that often there's a discontinuity uh, right here you can see right so when when you go you have to think about the full periodic extension you can't just think about what's happening between minus L and L you got to think of what's happening outside of that too so in fact here there's a little jump discontinuity Fourier series is going to converge there and same here okay and so you can see what uh, what, what kind of craziness is going on here Now let's explore uh, the convergence of Fourier series with two examples. The first example, oops, first example okay, um, is going to be a very simple function. So I'm going to let f of x be equal to 0 for minus L less than um, x is less than 0. But on the other side, it's going to be x L minus x uh, for 
0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to L. And if I were to sketch that function, what it's going to look like is um, just a simple little thing that does, um, that does this and then it's zero here and then it repeats so this function is continuous and then it just keeps lumping around okay so this is this is 2L, so at 2L we go right back to where 0 is, and this would be uh, 3L out here. 3L um, is the same as, uh, I'm sorry, 2L is the same as 0, 3L is the same as L, and well, you get how this works, right? Um, okay, so anyway, we could calculate the Fourier coefficients of that, so um, I'm going to do that in, um, in uh, uh, Mathematica in a second, but it's not hard to do by hand either. In this case, that's example one. Example two, uh, we're going to have f of x, but we're going to make it a little weirder here. So, mathematically, you're going to say, what is the big deal? So, that part looks the same, and I'm going to have x, l minus x, just like before, but I'm going to add one to it. Okay, and this is going to go from 0 to x to l. Now, I contend that this second example is fundamentally different. Now, why is that? Okay, well, why is it fundamentally different? Well, the first example that I gave to you, the function was at least continuous, right? This second example, that is not the case. So in the second example here, okay, when I work with this thing, it's going to be 0 here. Then it does that, and then 0 again, right? Oops, I goofed that up. Sorry. Um, okay, it's 0 here. And then it has a little jump. And then it's 0 again. We'll jump over here. Now let me ask you this. Going back to this example, the function's continuous. Is the derivative continuous? Think about that for a minute. Okay. On this one, definitely the function is discontinuous and therefore the derivative is continuous. Now notice within each domain, there's infinitely many continuous derivatives. It's just there's a finite number of discontinuities and that's what piecewise smooth means. So this theorem only applies to piecewise. Whoops! <laughs> uh, this theorem only applies to piecewise smooth functions. Now let's spend a little time with Mathematica. We're going to calculate the Fourier coefficients uh, for the two sample functions I gave you, and then we're going to look at how the Fourier series actually converges. So the uh, the A0 coefficient is fairly straightforward to set up, so we're just going to integrate it. I put the simplify in, that just tells Mathematica to perform some simple steps there. Okay, that's great. Um, so it does these things for us. For the second one, let's look at this for a second. Um, if I were to just tell it to go ahead and do the integral, it's not exactly what I want because it has expressions like sine n pi in it. Well, uh, sine n pi is zero, and it would be nice if Mathematica did that for me. Cosine n pi is minus one to the n. It would be nice if it did that too. Well, you can tell Mathematica to do that for you. So as an argument to simplify, I can tell it that n isn't anything. Uh, n is an integer. So I would say n is an element of, now I hit the escape key, and the special character el, and I hit the escape key again. And that tells it it's an element of, that's the little element of symbol, and then integers. Okay, and if I tell it, go ahead and evaluate that, it simplifies it. Do the same thing here. Now, um, I, oh, I should uh, I should have told it that it, this too was, uh, sorry, clean 
that one up. Now I've taken the liberty of letting L be equal to 1, just for our example. And then I wrote out what the series is. So I told it uh, generate, um, generate a table of all these pots. I'm telling it, give me 20 different pots. And pot it from minus 2 to 2, so, that, so it's two domains worth. And uh, and the pot will be the sum of the Fourier series from one to uh, to, uh, uh, to as many as twenty. So the first pot will go from one to one. So it'll just be one mode. The second pot will be two modes. The third mode will be or the third pot will be three modes. It'll go from one to three and so on. And then we're gonna look at the pots. So let's go ahead and calculate this. This may take a minute. Okay, and it's done. And now we're going to look at the plots. Okay, I'm going to tell it to stop, stop animating here. Okay, so this is one mode, right? So this is just one twelfth plus the first sine and cosine wave. Okay, and if I take it one more here, that's the second one. Remember what it's trying to do. It's supposed to be zero here and a parabola, and it's looking pretty good. Okay, and then I keep going ahead. Oops, sorry. And it starts to converge there. And I want you to also notice that what is the convergence rate for this Fourier series? We'll notice that if I look at these coefficients, you look at the slowest converging coefficient and that tells you what the convergence rate is, right? So here we have one over n squared, one over n cubed. So as n gets really big, these coefficients don't matter so much because they're getting smaller faster than those coefficients. Okay, and we see it converge into something that looks like the right function. Okay, this is just a command that tells you to, that exports those to a GIF, so you can create an animated GIF. Let's do it again for the second example. And let's watch the Fourier series suffer. So remember, the big difference here was now the function itself is discontinuous. And notice when you look at these Fourier series here, okay, they do not converge as quickly. So this one converges like n squared. Great. But look at this one, and this is for the sine mode. What's the convergence rate of that? Recall your calculus, uh, uh, your calculus class, and when you're looking at convergence of rates of Fourier series. So as n gets big, how fast does this series converge? So hit the pause button, think about it a little bit, and study that equation. Are you done? Okay, if you think this converges like 1 over n, you are correct. Okay, because notice that the term in the numerator has an n squared in it. Okay, so this converges like 1 over n, very slow, harmonic convergence. Okay, let's see what the plot looks like. Okay, now let's take a look at what these plots look like. Oops. Well, you can kind of see right there. Okay, so we start out with a single mode. Just step through it very slowly. I made 50 pots here. So notice the convergence is very slow. Okay, it's one over n. So I, I went ahead and generated 50 pots here. That's a lot of pots. But look at how hard it is struggling to do the jump discontinuity. Look at that jump discontinuity in there. So it's a little parabola up here, and it takes increasingly high frequencies to pick off this point. Why is it? That's that jump discontinuity, right? This function comes down and touches at 1 here, and then it goes all the way to 0. So it's going to converge to 1 half right in there, which it does right away. Okay, But look at this. This is after 25, 25 modes. And it still doesn't look so great. Compare that to this thing. This thing can get smooth after even just 10, right? It looks pretty good. After 20, you really can't tell that it's that it's not converged, right? Maybe there's a few little wiggles down there. This one, okay, it's got problems. And as you keep going, this is that Gibbs phenomenon I was talking to you about before, right? Notice that it keeps overshooting there, right? So I could zoom in tighter and tighter and tighter, and it still overshoots. You can't get rid of that. So I could I could add I could have a hundred modes and I would still see the overshoot there. So more and more wiggles.